this t-shirt. He's here with Bless the Buck, and uh, it's a crowd. It's a crowdfunding platform that focuses on these big ideas, but that have a positive impact. So tell everybody a little bit more about the website and the app. Well, Bless the Buck is, uh, we call it crowdfunding for social good, and we've looked at going with cause campaigns, tech, uh, entrepreneurial, those that wanted to leave a legacy in what they were doing. So the, with the, there's a lot of crowdfunding platforms out there, and what we decided to do to make ourselves a little bit different is go towards social good, but also we're a creative agency. So we've been, a, we've ran into a lot of cam campaigns and, and people doing crowdfunding had no clue what to do. So we actually moved into a side of where we want to teach them what crowdfunding actually is, how to truly make your presentation. People say yes to it, because if no one wants to pin it, post it, or follow it, you're right. not going to be successful. Right, because people have great ideas, but then they need this little marketing engine behind yeah. them too. So you give them kind of a double whammy. And the other part of it is, you know, everyone say, "What if I, you know, if I get, if I don't get funded? Okay, we know you don't get funded, but what if you do?" And when that comes, we're right there also to help those campaigns is coming through with creating the brand and, and bringing it to market because we've done it for ourselves. Almost like a, I guess kind of like an accelerator. This is like a marketing accelerator and a crowdfund. We call it our business together, dev. So. We, you know, we, 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 are, we got an idea factory. We get headaches every single day because we're <laughs> coming up with new ideas. Good. All right. Well, how can people take part and uh, learn more about this product? Uh, go to blessabuck.com. Uh, and we do have a crowdfunding one-on-one on there. And you can download it for free. And once you sign up, when we have some town halls and some webinars and some things like that, you'll be able to get those things. And, and we're going to give it away. Okay. All right. Well, I guess everybody check them out on Twitter too. The handle is Bless a Buck, B L E S S A B U C K. And then same with the Facebook and uh, blessabuck.com. So thank you very much. Thank you for Looking having Looking forward us. to the town halls and thank you for the beer. I appreciate right. you being around. <laughs> See if we can. One, two, okay. We'll keep going, but I'll do a blindfold. That's how good I am. We have Jimmy Jacobson here. We're very lucky to have him back on the show. Thanks, Jimmy, for coming. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not your birthday Ooh. this time, so we won't be surprising you. I'm sorry. Appreciate that. But uh, <laughs> you guys have been working out a really cool deal with Twilio, and uh, it involves a bus. So tell me how this works. Uh, so we're getting on a bus. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. What kind of bus, Jimmy? Come on, give me uh, something. So Twilio is a fantastic company, um, cloud services for uh, telecommunications, and they have a great conference coming up in San Francisco, September 17th through 19th. And Twilio loves Vegas. And they are parking a bus in front of work in progress on the 16th, and any developer from Vegas that wants to get on that bus and go to TwilioCon will get the bus for free, their tickets to TwilioCon for free, and free food while you're there. You're just responsible for your own lodging, so don't go there and be homeless. And Wi-Fi enabled bus, right? Wi-Fi enabled bus will be yeah. doing like some hackathon events on the bus, and then the bus will come back on that Friday. So it's two days of awesome bus travel with other developers, and then uh, three days of awesome conference, all for free. Sounds like a lot of fun. Now, so you also cool. managed to roll in like a little bonus day, too. It was something to do with hacking or developing? Mm -hmm. There are re some really cool events going on. There is uh, Boxworks is another API that's having a developer day around the same time. And there are the Hack Hacker Olympics, which were invented by John Gottfried, who was here before. Yeah. John is a very cool right. guy. I Hacker like Hacker Olympics lot. include everything from deciphering uh, riddles in prose to beating levels of Nintendo 64 games and straight up coding challenges. And so that would be one night of Twilio awesome. awesome. So John Gottfried has actually organized buses before, right? He did the startup bus for, mm -hmm. for one of the sessions, which is really cool. So if people uh, want to take part of being on this bus, if there's any developers out there that are really excited about hearing about this, how is, how is the best way for them to get involved or get accepted into this bus? Um, you can apply. You can go to the, the Twilio blog or check tweets from myself at Jimmy Jacobson, follow me, or um, <laughs> or on uh, the Facebook Vegas Tech uh, channel as well. We have posts all over the place for that. Excellent. Now Twilio has you know done amazing things for the Vegas Tech community because they're so great about it. I hear that there's something else coming up too for Vegas Tech, so mm -hmm. it's a really good time for hacking right now, isn't it? Absolutely. Fall is a great time to be a developer in Vegas. Uh, there's the hacker bus leaving as well as October 5th and 6th is the next Vegas hack. And its uh, theme is going to be fashion tech. 
Uh, so everything hmm. from fashion apps to wearable technology, Google Glass, um, lining up some really great partnerships for that. And you can go to Vegas, uh, VegasHack.com to sign up now for that, and it's going to be really awesome. I'm absolutely going to be there. I may be working on something 3D printed, but it'll be hackable, I promise. Absolutely. But yeah. Awesome. Nice. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna move over now and talk to Mr. Mike Yoder. But but winning Startup Camp Eight, that's that's no small accomplishment. That was so, uh, yeah, really exciting for us. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about what happened. Uh, well, Startup Camp Eight was part of uh, IT Expo, which is a large convention for uh, the telecom industry. So Microsoft, Avaya, Cisco, those type of organizations are there, uh, talking about the future of voice over IP and telecom. And uh, they held the startup event competition, uh, which had uh, four companies from around the. Uh, country compete, and we were lucky enough to, to win the competition. No, I wasn't lucky with skill. I got my first Alice <laughs> Receptionist call just a little while ago. So tell us about some of the new um, and upcoming changes that's going on with your company and new things to look out for. So this year we've really focused on uh, partnership and relationships. So we're working on building out our reseller and distribution channel this year. Um, and so we've signed a large contract with uh, Elo Touch Solutions, which is a global distributor with over Six, uh, 265 uh, resellers globally uh, who will start nice. selling Alice this month. And nice. uh, we're building uh, partnerships with uh, our next target is Microsoft and Cisco for their unified communication products. Okay, and then leave us with just a quick like 30, 45 second pitch. Tell me what Alice Reception is because it's not just a virtual avatar. So Alice is a uh, lobby management solution that manages visitor traffic to your building. So basically we put a unit in the lobby area. It could be a flat screen monitor or a kiosk. It uses motion detection to see when somebody walks in, and then a live person pops up on the screen, an employee of the company, to actually greet the visitor. That employee can be in the building or across the country, it doesn't matter where they're at. Wow. Yeah, put one on the bus, you know? Yeah, on the bus. Visit. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Quilio <laughs> Alice, I like it. <laughs> Jimmy, you want to hum? Uh, what's that? Do you remember that nursery rhyme? It's like wheels on the bus go. <laughs> oh, interesting. The wheels on the bus go. <laughs> the wheels on the bus go. Round and round. All day long. <laughs> that was all. That just came out of nowhere. But thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. I was going to try to embarrass him, but he got me. So thank you guys. See you. Thank you. Thank you. This week's events, we're focusing on a specific theme as we always do. Now you might notice that I'm wearing a dress today that has love hearts on it. And that is for a specific purpose. We're going to be talking about couple events that you can do in Vegas. So if you're looking for an excellent couples experience, definitely listen up to these events coming up. Okay. All right. So first off, start by raising your hand if you guys have ever been part of a posse. I'm thinking, you know, like Biker, D&D, Insane Clown. <laughs> okay, we got, a, we got about half audience. Not bad. I'm definitely guilty of D and D. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> good. Two different groups, but we're going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, so, if you would like to join a posse, there's a very cool weekly posse. They're called the Las Vegas Pizza Posse, and this. <laughs> The next event on September the 24th, they're going to be focusing on downtown this time. So they're going to be starting at Radio City Pizza, and that's going to be from 7 p.m. till 9 p.m. And this group meets up regularly. Like I said, it was weekly, and they try different pizzerias. Sometimes they focus on one pizzeria. Sometimes they kind of do a little tour in the one night. So this is going to be really fun. If you're interested in learning more, they are actually on meetup.com, and you just rock up. There's no charge or anything like that. And their idea is tracking down and experiencing the best pizza while having the best time as well. So I can't see any fault in that kind of event. So definitely no. look that up. Right. And if that pizza makes you have to sit down too long, looks like we might have a yoga event coming up. Again, that is correct. Stretch you out a little bit. <laughs> so we have the Vegas Gone Yoga Festival, and that's on Sunday, September the 22nd. And the idea of it is to bring together an environment with local studios, yoga businesses, and networking and things like that. So you'll be able to take advantage of lots of different sessions. Now, it does go for three days, and you can get a pass for the festival for $50. If you wanted to attend just separate sessions, it is $20, which is really cool. And it's going to be held at Springs Preserve. So anyone who's been to Springs Preserve knows how beautiful it is and really Ooh. scenic. So if Springs, you really want to... Springs Reserve fans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's going to be a really beautiful and relaxing three-day festival. So make sure you get down for at least one session. And uh, you can get tickets on Ticket Cake. 
It's great. Yeah, next time we need to cheer them up, just tell them about Springs Preserve. I think they <laughs> get them going. All right, so, um, you know, we've lived here at Ticket Cake. We've been here for almost a year now. But, you know, on the 28th, we're going to get a chance to rediscover downtown Las Vegas as though we'd never been here before. So tell us about that. I think that's an awesome idea, actually, because you tend to kind of go to the same downtown places every time, you know, once yeah. you get your favorites. So you still only be one place, you know? Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot. It's just like and the you, beat. And you might not have found out about them, and you're, you're actually really right in that. So this is a really cool event for you to, to to uh, attend, it's called the Rediscover Downtown Happy Hour Bus Tour. So that is a mouthful, but that sounds pretty cool from uh, like to me. And it's one of those big buses, so you can actually sit on the roof, and they are doing one of those kind of rooftop tours, and they're going to drive around downtown, and they're going to tell you about all of the cool places that have opened recently. And it's pretty cheap too. It's only twenty-five dollars a person, and that's on Saturday, September the twenty-eighth, from three till six p.m. So make sure you arrive and check in at two thirty if you have bought yourself a ticket. And it's going to be departing uh, from the downtown third farmers, oh, sorry, it ends at the downtown farmers market and it goes through the Arts District, Main Street, Fremont East and the Soho Lofts as well as many, many more places. So very, very cool. You can get tickets on Ticket Cake. Nice. All right, so the outfit you were talking about when we first started the segment, mm -hmm. you describe it more fall 2013 or more spring 2012? I think this is a little bit spring, but I'm, I'm hanging on to the fact that summer is still kind of happening and fall is never going to happen, it feels like. But, but I like yeah. the hearts. Oh, <laughs> Alexis, do you want to show me your heart socks? Oh, yeah. Could, could be a good opportunity. Alexis is on the theme. I noticed these earlier when she came in. Yeah, just, just throw your leg up there. It's not a big deal. <laughs> See? That would be good for the couples events. <laughs> She's got a boyfriend. Just calm it down, gentlemen. Calm it down, gentlemen. Thanks, Alexis. <laughs> So the next event I'm going to tell you about is the Fall Cocktail Collection. That's on Saturday, October the 19th. Very cool event because it's basically celebrating mixology, cuisine, and fashion, and it has a fall theme. So I think I'm really excited to see some fall fashion, so I definitely want to come down to this. It's going to be at the Cleveland Clinic Luruvo Center for Brain Health. That's a bit of a mouthful. But if anyone's been around the World Market area downtown, it's that kind of really crazy wavy yeah, building. So it's cool. yeah, yeah, it's it's your chance to kind of check out the building and also support a good cause. So admission is $55 and if you want a VIP ticket which I heard is very special it's going to be $85 and it's known as this year's ultimate sipping soiree so I'm really Ooh. excited they're going to have top soiree, chefs yeah. as well as top mixologists making you cocktails and cooking you really nice food as well as a bunch of really cool fashion experts and DJing and that kind of thing so I think that's going to be a really cool event again it's Saturday October the 19th you can get tickets from the fullcocktailcollection.com and I think that's going to be a really good one yeah. Okay, so fact. Do you know that 9 out of 10 people will never play a game of dodgeball in a room that's built out of trampolines? It's a terrible, terrible disaster. I think we need to fix this. I think we need to fix that, too. Because it sounds amazing. Um, I really want to jump on trampolines and have balls thrown at me. Like, yes. what if it was medicine balls? That would make it a lot more interesting, too. That would. It would. So keeping with our theme of couples events, uh, who better to speak to than somebody from Coupler? So we have Adam here to talk about the next two events that are coming up. Yeah. Yeah, show up his socks if you want. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, okay, if you can outdo her. Sorry, they're, they're, so, very, they're very boring, very bland. <laughs> so tell me about this crazy like trampoline dodgeball thing. Sure, we're doing an event um, called Jump Up and Get Down. Uh, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> clever, yeah. clever. I like it. Yeah. Enough, thanks. Uh, and, and it's a, a room filled with trampolines. Um, they're going to do some teach you how to do backflips and do crazy stuff wow. like that. And we're also going to do 3D dodgeball, which uh, I'm interested in trying for the first time myself, as is my wife. So that's uh, going to be uh, September 27th, coming up. Uh, $40 tickets on Ticket Cake. And that's just like wall to wall of trampolines, right? Yes. Like you just, everywhere you jump, you will bounce yeah, back you up too again. Like it's yes. <laughs> if you think you're going to fall, you just land on another trampoline. You're it's cool. pretty awesome. Cool. And then you have a bowling event coming up, I hear, We too. do. We have a bowling event coming up at uh, South Point. Uh, it's three games of bowling, uh, four drink tickets um, for $40 for a couple. That's for very good value. Excellent. And I've been to South Point too. It's a really cool venue. And I like that there's a bar right next to the bowling alley as well. That's super <laughs> so it's convenient. Very close. Cool. Yeah. And uh, how can people sign up for these events? Uh, you can go to couple.com, or I'm sorry, couple.co, uh, or you can go to Ticket Cake. Uh, the tickets are available on either. Excellent. Well, thank you. They sound like really cool events. I'll have to see if I can bring my significant other down. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate thank you coming you. out. Cool. And that's all you guys. That is awesome.
intro they gave you. But so our next guest is a man known to many as the Electric Baron, due to his work as the CEO of the uniquely downtown Electric wait, 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 People wait, 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 Mover wait, 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 Project. Time out, time out. Am I the what? <laughs> I want you to name off. I want you to name The man it is the Electric People Mover Project. Name every e- person who told you that. Or e pimper. <laughs> well, one person. He lives inside my head. So you just give, give him a break. AKA Project 100. He's a man with a 1 to 7 ratio of followers to following on Twitter, which is very impressive. And he has a voice that is so smooth that an NPR broadcaster would be jealous. And today, he's going to talk to us a little bit about what's happening with Zappos' new headquarters and this mega party that's happening on Monday. So please put your hands together for the always respectful of Hormel's spam trademarks. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Zach Ware. <laughs> okay, let's, let's just get this out of the way. Talk about this building opening up right outside our window. We'll have to do it in this voice now. <laughs> yeah, it's very quiet. Um, yeah, no, so we're, we're, it's weird because at one point I was on this, on, on the podcast and I was on the other side of the building and I walked in and thought I might have been too drunk the last time to realize I was on this side of the building and right. got really confused. <laughs> so just outside of this window um, is the former Las Vegas City Hall, which on Monday will officially be the new Zappos headquarters. Um, we've been working on it for two and a half years. It's the first thing that I ever did related to downtown. I came out of Zappos Tech on this cr- crazy whim to, to build the campus and we're finishing so it on Monday. And how long ago was that? When do you remember first hearing about it? Uh, uh, and we heard about it in December of 2010, um, and then I, oh, long time in the making. Tony asked me to start, first started asking me to work on it in April of 2011, and I said no until July. Really? And then I said yes, yeah. And I guess at that point, were you trying to purchase the building, or was it? did you find so, that after it had already kind of been No, we, we announced, we kind of did it a little backwards. We announced the, 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 the move before we actually had for physical ownership of the building or, or, oh, or we had the lease very signed. Daring of you. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, negotiation <laughs> tactic. Um, and I'm also the proud owner of a, of a new tower in New York. Okay. Um, that's my, <laughs> you hear that? Congrats. Um, yeah. So, uh, we, we, we started working on the building about a year and a half later. So we took possession April of last year. Uh, we started demolition in July, um, about Two weeks and a year ago, we opened the Carson office, um, and then, you know, just right, almost exactly on schedule, we're opening City Hall. So it's pretty amazing. Okay, well, so this party, this grand opening that's happening on Monday, a lot of little things are bubbling up. But some yeah. of the bigger ones, I hope you could either dismiss or verify, are a hot air balloon. Possibly? It's right out here, actually. There'll be a hot air balloon. Okay. Um, so Start literally, you, you're going to lose your view on, yeah. on Monday afternoon. <laughs> fine, I'll throw them a beer. You know? Yeah, it'll be exactly. fine. Don't throw it too hard, though. <laughs> can owe me, can owe me. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, no okay. smoking off the front of the Ogden on Monday is just my only suggestion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good suggestion. Safety first. Right. Okay, so um, Guinness Book of World Records or record setter, I hear there's going to be something going on. Yeah, we're, we're attempting to set a world record on Monday. Um, I'll, I'll let you come discover on your own what that, what that record oh. is, but, um, oh, yeah. but we're still going to set a world record. World's biggest chocolate fountain. That would be really, well, yes. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> As a guess. That was a guess that I was what hoping for. Everybody doing this weekend, we need to make that happen. Okay. Well, better be better than that. I ruined it. I ruined it. Um, okay, so what about uh, what my lunch line is going to be like down at Rachel's Kitchen? Do you think all these people down here um, all day is going to mess up my whole life? Um, yeah. Probably. Yeah, that's what I, 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 I think. Uh, I think it's going to be tough to get lunch in downtown Vegas for a little while. I, I, the, we were talking about it in a meeting, uh, down, a downtown project the other day. Uh, talk, thinking about like what's going to happen in the next six to twelve months, and and our estimation is by roughly April or, or so, we'll have downtown somewhere between fifteen and twenty more restaurants. Um, that's not next week, um, and so it's going to take a little while. So for a few months, if you like Rachel, Rachel's Kitchen for lunch, get it at dinner, put it in the fridge, right? Get in the order, bring it to work yeah. the next day because it's not going to. Nah, not there's plenty rushes. I'm, I'm only so joking about how busy it's going to be, but I am no, kind of. But, but really I am kind of curious about like the collision because I mean the collision philosophy is yeah. you know collisions over convenience. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe standing in line is where I meet the next entrepreneur that helps me with the business. Like, that's kind of what this whole... And then you go through a whole relationship life cycle for the hour and a half right, that you're right. in line, and by the time you get up to the counter, you hate them. Right, well, um, a couple of businesses by then, and it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So funding from no, BTF, and yeah. Yeah, we, you know, I think what you'll notice about the way we built the campus when, when you visit either on Monday or, or, or later, um, is, is there, we, we designed it not only to encourage people to get outside on, in, in their, their sort of daily lives between different things they have to do as a Zappos employee, but we've opened it up to a lot of community folks. And, and you'll notice it's not something you have to check in for. You just can easily roll in and hang out in the lobby and work from the lobby. 
Now, we also minimize the number of things we built into the campus that normal, normal companies would build. Um, so our, our bistro is, is really awesome, but it's not, it's not a Google cafe. Right. Um, we don't have 10 of them. Um, and, and over time, we anticipate that most people will, will begin to do a lot of things like go to yoga classes or, or whatever outside. So you're going to start to see a lot of people that you didn't see before downtown. Gotcha. And from what I understand, it's kind of a phased thing anyways, right? Like the whole building is not going to be full day one. Uh, yeah. So it, or, well, yeah. well, we're moving people in phases based on uh, the, the readiness of the, their workspace or their schedule um, or what we think is something they can tolerate. So we're moving about two to 300 people a week for the next, the first week we'll move a lot less than normal and then we'll ramp it up after that. So by October 10th, 100% of the, build, the, the company will be in that building. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's pretty quick. Yeah. Um, okay, so and, and when you move a company like Zappos, which is so famous for culture, is it is it something you have to think about when they move? Like, they, does the culture just... Do you have any worries about it coming with them, or do you have to? Does the feng shui of the building like change things in any way? You, I don't know about the feng shui. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but, but does the <laughs> does the culture just travel through buildings, or do you have to even think about? Well, that? there's a chi. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, we. Uh, I just heard that word. I don't even know what it means. I, just, I don't either. I, yeah. I, I, I probably misuse that. Google just now. it. Yeah, I'll put it in the um, notes. We're gonna get angry emails. Look on YouTube, the little bubble that comes up. <laughs> Link it to them. <laughs> Let me Google that for you. Um, we. Uh, what you're, what's really cool about Henderson is that it was undesigned. It was not designed. It was kind of underdesigned for Zappos, and Zappos made it home. So what we had to be really careful not to do in this office was what every other company would do, which is really design it to feel like something that we wanted to force. You go to Google. There's red bubbles you sit on. There's there's art everywhere. We didn't do any of that. Yeah. We left as many surfaces untouched and as many walls clean. And basically, we've told employees, bring your crap. Right. Let's let's do it all it's over again. And over we it. have actually more walls to do it with at, at yeah. Zappos now. Yeah, that's, that, that's an incredible philosophy, how natural everything happens around yeah. here. Just living here, it's one of those things you kind of subconsciously absorb. But yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's strange how unforced it is. But then the ownership that everybody feels mm -hmm. over their little piece or how it fits into the collective exactly. is an interesting idea. All right, so I'm done throwing you softballs. <laughs> We're done with the pleasantries. So I want to introduce you to the newest in lie detection technology. These I glasses you. you were complimenting before. <laughs> so I put these out here so the camera can get them. But these, uh, these were a gift that Mr. Tony Shea got the podcast. And um, they're called the O2 Amp Glasses. And if you want to read up on them before you get grilled, go ahead. But we have the uh, Hemo ISO. Now what's going to happen is we're going to put a, we're going to put a light on you. It's 4,800 gigawatt light. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow me with these glasses on to see what blood is going through your cheeks. So I guess that's just how blushing happens. So we can definitely tell if you're lying. So I have one question that we're going to ask when I'm, I have I'm, these glasses on. Wait, you're going to put a light on me or the, the glasses are light? Or the light? Pavel. Oh. <laughs> okay, you're gonna need to look me in the eye though. Don't let the uh, camera okay. run. But we need to know about the new Zappos building. And is there any ghosts? They're dead people. He's telling the truth, people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's lying. It's clean. It's clean. No ghosts. No dead people. All right, we'll throw you some more softballs. But uh, let's talk about Elon Musk. I feel you like I just get... got sunburned. Yeah, yeah you might have. <laughs> 4,800 gigawatts isn't even a real thing. Yeah. Who knows what that's going to be? Again, I took your word for it. <laughs> okay, so tell, tell me about Elon Musk, though, because he, he is a superstar. And I've heard that uh, when you're getting the Teslas and everything, you got a chance to... I guess meet him or hang out with him or he came to visit. I'd love to hear more yeah, about what so, that experience was like. Yes, yeah, so so uh, as a part of what we did with Tesla, we've gotten to be very close with Tesla, the company, um, and, and that's been amazing. So we have we've, we we're close with their tech organization, we're close with their engineering organization, um, and we've I've had the chance. I've been fortunate enough to have the chance to to, to talk to Elon a couple of times uh, via email. And one of the things I, I did kind of a classic startup thing where I emailed him one day and said, "I want to pick your brain." And we, we had gone back and forth, so I just kind of replied to an email about something oh. totally different and yeah, said, "Yeah, yeah." Hi, Hi, Elon. I'd love to. I'll come to you. Give, can I have an hour at some point? Like the most annoying question in the history of questions, right? <laughs> and and he said uh, and he said no, but I haven't been to Vegas in a while. I'll come visit you. Which oh, is like, holy really? Crap. So he was here. Cool. He was actually here. Might have been three weeks ago. We had we hung out for about three hours. Then had dinner at La Comida. That's cool. Uh, and uh, drank a bunch of of, of sangria. Um, <laughs> and it was a, it was a lot of fun. He he's a, a brilliant guy. He's a great partner for us. And he's also just a really cool dude to hang out with, um, which is, I'm not sure why that's surprising. I just assumed that right. he would be like constantly talking about SpaceX, Tesla, whatever he's, the, the Hyperloop, yeah, yeah. That he just Going released, the the, well, the, I mean, he released the Hyperloop like four days before that, right. so the world was a little nuts for him, but yeah. it was really cool to, I don't know if anybody ever saw, saw my tweet, but I, I said something like, you know that you're at the right dinner when someone says, 
would you like to know how orbital mechanics work? <laughs> and, 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 right. and, and that literally happened at dinner. So it was, and we all said, yeah, yeah, we would. Yeah, like yeah orbital works. mechanics. Yeah. yeah, lay it on me. And I bought a book about like astrophysics after that because I'm, I've never felt dumber than I did at that dinner <laughs> when I knew nothing about yeah, astrophysics. Well, he's, I mean, I just, everything Elon Musk touches just seems so amazing. And then, like, I just I also like his big thinking yeah. out of the box. But tell me about what, uh, what kind of culture did you pick up from? Because, I mean, working at either Solar City or working at Tesla, it seems like just the fact that they're working on a project that's so world changing could develop a cool culture. But I'd love to hear if you talk to him about that and like what his take on was well, how to keep teams kind of unified like that. Well, I guess I spent more time at Tesla than I have with Elon Musk. So my, my experience has been at Tesla. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So yeah. you can speak to the culture. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, visited. it's, yeah. a, it's, I've, I've visited, I've, I've spent full days there. Um, I, I've, I've had a really awesome, really awesome exposure to who they are. They, they are a startup. They are a, I think they're close to 5,000 people now. They're, they're a 5,000 person startup. They think like a startup. They're really good at a lot of things and they're really bad at a lot of things. And, and that's makes me <laughs> that's feel okay. really, yeah, yeah, I know that makes me feel really good. You know, like when we order, yeah, as long as it's not the brakes, right. When we order, that's yeah, otherwise. yeah, exactly. They're, they're really good at, they're really good at building amazing cars. And then they, they're, you know, like for example, like we, we have to figure out how to service a fleet of more than a hundred of their cars. And they're like, we really don't know how to do that. And so figure it out with us. And, and they're the first to admit they don't know how to do stuff. Like when we bought the cars, we got a hundred confirmation emails. Like they've never done that before. You know, <laughs> so. There's only an inbox? Yeah, literally. The I, there's a, I tweeted it at some point. It, yeah, it was, we, and we just felt really bad for the person who's sitting in like in Palo Alto, just like typing them all in. Like she had a really bad Friday night. <laughs> we t I met that the person so who did funny. it later. Um, but yeah, so yeah. It, it's, uh, it, it, the culture is extremely focused. They, they do not stop and, and breathe ever. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that to me is, is really inspiring because it, it, it keeps me motivated when I think about like, I've got a company of 12 people now and right. they have 5,000 and they're still working and hard. they work like crazy people. So. Except the guy that got the commission on that deal, huh? Yeah. That guy's retired now. <laughs> Not like him. That guy, that guy answers emails really fast now, <laughs> yeah. let me tell you. Okay. So, uh, so the last topic I want to talk about is a, uh, super cool email I saw that you actually posted on your blog. And um, back in June, you said, um, quote, recently I decided to leave Zappos as a full-time employee, but remain with the company as a contractor focused on completing and opening Zappos new headquarters at the former Las Vegas City Hall. So I just wanted to ask, because we're kind of coming to this moment where that project's kind of coming to the end, why was it so important to you and how is that going to change your life now that it's actually open? Um, so uh, there's a lot of people in this room that, that worked with me at Zappos and I was a product guy. I wasn't a particularly uh, massive product guy. I was relatively new at Zappos. I'd been on, at, at here for about six or eight months when I transitioned over to the campus. And I went from, from, from in, the, in the course of a year, I went from managing a multi-million dollar website to being a part of managing a billion dollar website to then building a 300,000 square foot campus. And, and to go from, from like in that progression in like a year is crazy, right? Yeah. So to me, um, like this is the first thing I've ever done that was, was at a scale, I mean, like I can't even, you just look out the window, right? right it's yeah. like, like that, how that you prepare for it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't either. Exactly. <laughs> and, and we, we get it on time and we did it on budget and, and it's been, I thought at the beginning it was just really me kind of being there to guide the team. And it really became me there every day driving yeah. construction development design on a daily basis and then building an operations team and that seeing that team of, of, of 15 to 20 people now, like That's it's, crazy. it's crazy. So I, I got to do that. That was, that was what I did. Yeah. And so I, ch I checked the date when you posted it and you said like, it'll be open on the ninth or the 10th. And yeah. I was like, yeah, he's on, he's on yeah. one day. I'm glad you said a Sunday, but you know, we got it. Fact checking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look That's at good. a calendar before I said but that. But it's good. But I mean, hitting the deadline is yeah. impressive. And it's, um, I remember, I'd, actually, I remember saying that I, I sent an email out to Zappos too, where I said, we were open on this date. And I realized that was like a Sunday. Day and yeah, also one day off. Yeah, yeah right. um, but yeah, no, it, it's. I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of the team. Um, and for me the, to leave Zappos was timed in an interesting time. I, I've been able to work on a lot of things. And when when we decided to launch Project 100, which we talked about on the podcast before, um, it we, we we started moving so fast. Um, right. Like literally by mid September, we will be a team of 12 people. And like we're going to launch within six months. And to do that, I had to start thinking full time. And hiring a team recruiting people, it became clear that it was easier for me to be a, 
an employee of a different company that contracted for Zappos and had a little more flexibility yeah. over my time than an employee of a publicly traded company launching a company on the side where I kind of owed the company that extra right. time. So oh, it, it was awesome kind of project. a logical what, what thing. What an awesome problem to solve, too. I yeah. mean, it's something that maybe will be modeled all over the country. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, I'm, I'm probably the luckiest guy in the world right yeah. now, so I'm, I'm definitely thinking. <laughs> well, I think you deserve a lot of it. I think you deserve a lot of it. You know, not only did you this place open on time, but you also, well, you and everybody else, they revitalized a whole area around it. And they, they were somewhat of a trigger for all the reason we're here and all these people here in the podcast. Podcast. And um, yeah, to end, the, to end the podcast, I just want to make sure everybody knows they can follow Zach on Twitter at Zach Ware, Z A C H W A R E. To do what Jimmy did. You follow can, me. Um, yeah, and you go, everybody, <laughs> uh, it's open to the public, the party on Monday. Yeah. So everybody check it out on the 10th. And if you want to take tours, uh, you, you can obviously pop in on, on Monday. It's going to be a little crazy. So uh, by mid October, our tours team will be at 100%. And in the, in the meantime, if, if you really, really want to see, have a tour, just shoot me an email or hit me up on Twitter. And we can set one up for you in between now and then. Yeah, you got Paco down there doing a lot yeah. of that, so that would be cool. How, man. how lucky are we to have Paco, <laughs> too? Like, he knows everything about Vegas. <laughs> knows everything yeah. about Vegas. All right, cool. well, thank Thanks, you buddy. very much. I really appreciate you coming yeah. out. Give him a big round of applause. We appreciate thank you, Zach. So Jimmy used to work at Zappos, and then we sadly lost him, but he is kicking butt and taking names at Wedgies now, and we miss him a lot. So the question I'm going to ask is, Jimmy, if you still worked at Zappos, how would you decorate your new desk in the City Hall campus? Uh, I would have three things on my desk. The first is pictures of my wife and kids. Oh. The second is an oil painting of Zach Ware. <laughs> But it would be the, the before he left Zappos, Zach, where he, he's lost a lot of weight. It's very impressive. Um, and the third thing is, uh, if you've seen The Matrix, when he goes into The Matrix and says, we need a lot of guns, and all those racks of guns go flying by, I would have that except Nerf weapons, because Zappos is a very dangerous place to be without a Nerf gun at any given time. It is, and we've been buying new guns ready for the new campus, too, so be afraid. Be very, very afraid if you walk through, Jimmy. I will all be protected. <laughs> Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Beat bums, beat bums, downtown project. Vegas, we the hardest. Yeah, yeah. Alright, alright, right, it's downtown. We running this. Rest of y'all just running lips. Creeping on and come up to Vegas. Yeah, we in this bitch. Tweet to your followers. Remember, like a flashback. Vegas tech. Don't forget to spell it with the hash.